Welcome to the HR Chat Show, one of the world's most downloaded and shared podcasts designed for HR pros, talent execs, tech enthusiasts, and business leaders. For hundreds more episodes and what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com. Welcome to another episode of the HR Chat Show. Hey, this is your host today, Bill Bannum. Corporate leaders are facing many challenges that previous generations of business leaders never had to deal with. HR pros are crucial to instilling ethical practices within the corporate culture, making them vital partners on the path to organizational excellence. Today's returning guest is on a mission to help showcase some of the best leaders, those who approach challenges with ethical frameworks to unlock solutions. I'm joined on the show by Brian Peckrell, Executive Director at the William G. McGowan Charitable Fund. Brian, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you back to the HR Chat Show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Bill. It's always it's always a real pleasure to join you, and I'm excited to be on the HR Chat Podcast here at SHRM24. We're doing this in person, so this is the third time that you've been on the show, but the first time that I've got to do this in person. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It's fantastic. Now then, uh, why don't you start by telling our listeners a bit more about the William G. McGowan Charitable Fund? Absolutely. The William G. McGowan Charitable Fund is a family philanthropy located here in Chicago, where SHRM24 is is going on currently as we speak. We have a dual focus at the fund. The first is disrupting cycles of poverty through effective grant making in areas of education, health access, healthy foods, shelter, and training towards a living wage. The second is promoting ethical leadership in business. Really, that second pillar connects so well with the first because what we realized is that societies can't flourish. Philanthropy can't be effective without successful ethical leaders. We're in our 31st year and we're very proud of the work we've been doing. And uh, so you and I are sitting here live from Sherm. I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time so far. What have been some of your highlights? It's been a fantastic conference. 26,000 people. It's incredible to see that many people in one place. And always the energy of, of a Sherm event is like none other. It's really fun being here. I would say one of my, my highlights was, was Johnny Taylor's remarks yesterday. He was speaking about uh, three core components of HR moving forward, unlocking human potential, uh, grappling with the future of AI. He was saying AI versus AI plus HI equals ROI. And last but not least, uh, civility in the workplace moving forward. And that was a really thought-provoking conversation I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, shameless plug listeners uh, check out my recent interview with Jim Link CHRO of SHRM where we speak specifically around civility Um, okay so why is SHRM a great partner for you guys SHRM has always had uh, an incredible focus on ethical leadership and absolutely the truth is is that human resources are the creators of culture in an organization without HR managers organizations can't integrate the principles of ethical leadership that are needed to really help a business safeguard itself and flourish. So while executive leadership sometimes seems like it's separated from HR, they're they're intimately connected. And I think that it really comes together at an event like this. Thanks for listening to this episode of the HR Chat Podcast. If you enjoy the audio content we produce, you'll love our articles on the HR Gazette. Learn more at hrgazette.com. And now, back to the show. Earlier today, uh, you were up on the main stage for the announcement and the presentation of the third Ethical Leader of the Year Award. The award recognizes a Fortune 500 CEO who exemplifies outstanding ethical leadership. We'll talk about who that is in just a moment. Don't give the game away just yet. Um, First off, what what are some of those traits of uh, exemplary leaders? Absolutely. So I'll actually cite our McGowan Fellows Program. We have a business leadership initiative that we lead in partnership with 10 uh, MBA programs across the country. And through that program, we try to instill principles of ethical leadership in our fellows through coaching, through a significantly challenging experience, and leadership training as well. 
Those principles are accountability, character integrity, empathy, self-awareness, courage, and resilience. And when I think of an ethical leader, I think of somebody who exhibits those traits, somebody who does what they say, who exhibits great integrity, someone who's self-aware of how their leadership is, is coming across to their stakeholders, to their customers, to their staff, to society at large, somebody who is accountable for their actions and empathetic to how their business decisions affect others. So core to, I think, ethical leadership in the highest ranks is exhibiting those those virtues. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, no more waiting, listeners. Uh, the the winner was Marvin Ellison, CEO of Lowe's. Brian, why why was he a worthy recipient? Marvin Ellison was a fantastic candidate. And when our selection can, committee met, it was it was a clear cut choice. We knew that it was going to be Marvin from the moment we began to speak. And I really believe that Marvin captures a lot of the principles that I just described. Since joining Lowe's uh, C-Suite in 2019, Marvin has invested $50 million in training 50,000 individuals in the skills trades, unlocking human potential, addressing the skills gap. He's dedicated $100 million in Lowe's hometown initiative, an initiative to revitalize community spaces across all of America with a focus on rural America. Lowe's is really a leader in rural America as a corporate organization. I think they're a fantastic organization in that regard. During the pandemic, Lowe's dedicated $1.1 billion to frontline assistance to organizations so that they can keep going at this time of challenges. Lowe's has been nurturing diverse talent in the C-suite. Since joining, they've become one of the most diverse executive leadership teams in the Fortune 500. They went from having zero people mm. of color to being 60% mm. people of color, yeah. 10% uh, women to 43% 40. yeah. women. And they've done that without sacrificing business. Their stock price has gone from 85 to $220. Their market cap has doubled, $67 billion to $130 billion. So I really believe he's a deserving winner. So he's doing a good job, you'd say? I would say he's doing a great <laughs> job. Once in a while, an event series is born that shakes things up, it makes you think differently, and it leaves you inspired. That event is Disrupt HR. The format is 14 speakers, 5 minutes each, and slides rotate every 15 seconds. If you're an HR professional, a CEO, a technologist, or a community leader and you've got something to say about talent, culture, or technology, Disrupt is the place. It's coming soon to a city near you. Learn more at disrupthr.co. Okay, so we're recording this interview on, I think it's June 25th today, uh, and you're a busy guy today, you've got loads going on, because later on you'll be presenting a session called Designing Leadership Training Program for a Complex and Uncertain World. And uh, my understanding is the session will uh, consider ways to design and implement leadership training programs with embedded ethical principles, mm -hmm. equipping leaders with the skills to navigate real world challenges. Can you share some key principles and strategies for embedding ethics into leadership training programs? I would say that there are there are core practices that you can do to in integrate those practices into leadership programs. Uh, the three core elements I would say is you need to know your values. You first have to predefine what those values are so that you can teach and train towards them. The second is you have to create experiences and engagements that challenge the, the respective individual, the leader, it brings them outside their comfort zone and helps them reflect on their current leadership practice and how they can improve. And last but not least, you need to have coaching. Individuals have to be coached towards what they want to be who they, and how they want to achieve it. And they have to integrate within that coaching the smallest steps that they can take to practice those values, whether it's empathy, accountability, or self-awareness. For me, those are the three core elements to designing a leadership program in a complex and uncertain world. Okay, there we go, listeners. If you weren't able to attend that session, you just picked it up all there, so you're good. Um, one of the two pillars of Sherm 24 is civility, Brian. How should yeah, – you, you've been an employee. You, you've been on the leadership side. How should civility show up in the workplace, and how can leaders help to foster a welcoming, safe, and inclusive work environment. Absolutely. Well, I think it begins in HR, 
uh, as we were saying earlier, HR is the creators of culture. And if we want to have a strong, positive culture where people want to work and where people can be productive in their work, they have to have civility. And really, it starts it starts with a leader who who is demonstrating those values that we were talking about earlier, self-awareness, empathy, and making sure that they, they trickle down throughout all elements of the organization. And those are the core steps, I believe, to creating an organization that practices civility. And today in the world we, we live, this is, this is really important. If we want to have successful organizations, a successful society, it's going to start with civility. Okay. Uh, so that takes us to the end of this particular conversation. Before we wrap up, how can our folks connect with you and also learn more about the William G. McGowan Charitable Fund? Absolutely. They should visit our webpage, uh, williamgmcgowanfund.org. There they can learn more about the Ethical Leader of the Year Award, our fellows program, and all of our fantastic work. Awesome. I'd also encourage folks to check out the two previous conversations that we've had. Absolutely. Where they can learn even more about you. But for today, that just leads me to say, Brian, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Phil, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for listening to the HR Chat Show. If you enjoyed this episode, why not subscribe and listen to some of the hundreds of episodes published by HR Gazette. And remember, for what's new in the world of work, subscribe to the show, follow us on social media, and visit hrgazette.com.